unboxing, tests and review of the Donna DST-100S electric guitar. This guitar is the less expensive brother of the DST-152S that I recently reviewed. And in fact, I was so impressed with that guitar, I used it in a couple of videos. One where I actually did a comparison between the sound of that guitar and a couple of genuine American Fender Strats. I'll put the links to the review of that guitar and the tests down below in the description in case you want to have a look at that one as well. And the DST-152 is actually the slightly less expensive brother of the DST-400. So as far as I can tell, there's three guitars available in the Strat range at the moment. The DST-100, which is the cheapest, the DST-152, which is the mid-range, and the DST-400, which is the high-end one. And of course, all three guitars are available in several colours. Now, I'm not going to give you any prices in this video, and that's because Donna quite often have special offers. And I know pretty soon there'll be some Black Friday offers coming up where the guitars will have quite a good discount on them. So it'd be well worth you taking a look on Amazon and on the Donna website to see what the special offers are. And I'll obviously put some links down below in the description to where you can get these guitars from. Right, let's get on with the unboxing. This guitar came from Donna and the box is about six inches longer than your average guitar box and that's probably for the accessories but you're in no doubt as to what's in the box as it's clearly marked on it so if you're buying one of these for a birthday or christmas present for someone you might want to arrange delivery on a day when they're not in inside the box the guitar is actually in its case with the accessories either side and the reason the box was a little bit bigger was because it had padding either side to keep the guitar safe. I'll just put the mini amp and the accessories aside so I can finish opening up the guitar. Inside the case, the guitar's covered in a polystyrene bag. And hopefully this is the last layer before we can take a look at the guitar. Wow, it's getting like past the parcel here. The last layer now is a piece of paper that's covering the strings and keeping damp off them. Right, let's get rid of this last bit of packaging and then we can have a really good look at the guitar. And tucked underneath that paper was a silicone gel patch, which also helps protect the guitar and the strings from damp. And my first impressions are another nice guitar. So let's have a really good look over it. And the first thing I noticed is the fact that I've missed a little bit of the protective packaging. So let's just get rid of that. Now, I've already reviewed the DST-152 and that came with the same accessories as this guitar. So, for the sake of my subscribers and anyone who saw that review, I'll go through the accessories at the end of the video. However, it's well worth hanging on to see that if you haven't seen the accessories yet, because this is a fairly weighty bag full of all sorts of goodies. So, we'll take a look at those at the end of the video. Right, let's take a good look over the guitar, and we'll start at the headstock. I'll take the labels off the headstock first, so I can move the guitar around without them getting in the way. The headstock is the same shape as the headstock on the DST-152. It's got two butterfly string trees, and pretty typically this is where the truss rod can be accessed. The nut is described as synthetic bone, which could mean anything, 
but the height is really good, which means that the action at this end of the guitar is really good as well. The machine heads are the modern sealed type, which I much prefer over the vintage ones that are on the DST-152, and they feel quite positive with good resistance and no looseness, which is a good sign for later on when I tune the guitar. The neck and the headstock are maple, and like most modern guitars, they're a matte finish, and the wood looks really nice. Looking closely at the neck, not only is the wood nice, but the finish is nice, so it's smooth to the touch. The neck is a C-shaped neck, and for my tastes, it's a little bit chunky. However, it's still very playable, and you'd soon get used to it. The fingerboard is described as perilla wood, which, to be quite honest, I don't know anything about. However, it has got a really nice tight grain and a really good uniform coloration on it. The frets aren't the jumbo size, they're more of a standard size, and they're finished really well. The side of the frets is smooth, so there's no sharp edges. In the past, it was the easy way of telling a cheap guitar. The edges of the frets were never finished properly. However, recently, the guitars I've reviewed have had really nicely finished frets. And this guitar is no exception. Another very positive thing I need to point out about the neck on this guitar is that the setup is very good. The neck is very flat and the action is at a good height. And this again, it's unusual for a cheap guitar. And actually, it's even unusual for expensive guitars. And to be completely honest, I've no way of knowing if this is just pot luck and I got a really well set up guitar, or if they're all delivered like this. It'd be nice to think that they were. Right, let's move on to the body. And where the neck meets the body, everything seems perfect there. The neck pocket seems tight and the scratch plate fits neatly against the edge of the neck and the back plate is nicely engraved with the Donner logo. The finish on the body is a nice high gloss finish and being the sunburst version you can actually see the wood grain through the varnish which is really nice. You can actually even see the joints in the wood on this particular guitar. But I don't think this detracts from it. In fact, it looks quite nice. The back plate is the type with the holes in, so you've got easy access to the back of the strings. And unusually, the back plate is actually shaped, which you don't even get on the expensive Fender Strats. Now, if you're new to guitars, or you're looking for your first guitar, you'll find there's a lot of Fender Strat copies. And I think part of the reason for that is the way it's shaped to fit in with the body. And it makes it a very comfortable guitar to play. And this guitar has got all that shaping, so it'll be comfortable to play. And it also looks good as well, I think. Before we take a look at the pickups, I'll just explain something that I've been asked in the comments a couple of times. And that is, when you go to a website and it has things like HSS, SSS or HH, what does this mean? It's referring to the kind of pickups. And this guitar would be HSS, which means humbucker, single, single. And a humbucker pickup, very basically, it's like two single coil pickups attached together. And it produces a little more power than a single coil pickup. And as the name suggests, it also suppresses hum or background noise. This guitar then is an upgrade on the standard strap 
in that it's got a humbucker pickup on the bridge position. However, it's got a single coil pickup in the middle position and a single pickup on the neck position. So, in many web stores, you see this as being HSS. On the guitar, then, you'll also get a pickup selector switch, which allows you to go between the pickups. And this pickup selector switch has got five positions. So, I'll show you how I test pickups are just working, and we'll go through the different positions on this pickup switch now. And to test the pickups working, firstly you have to have it plugged in and the amplifier up so you can hear the guitar. And then you simply tap the pickup you're testing with a screwdriver or something magnetic. Obviously you just tap it very lightly. And if the pickup's working, you'll hear a click coming through the amplifier. So using this method, Let's just see which pickups are selected in which positions on the pickup selector switch. Starting with the switch in the far left position as you're looking at it. And this position just turns on the humbucker pickup. Now we'll move the pickup selector switch over one click and test that. And this position turns on both the humbucker and the middle pickup. Putting the switch into the centre position then, this position turns on just the middle pickup. Now moving the pickup selector switch one click towards the right hand side and this position turns on both the middle pickup and the neck pickup. Finally, clicking the pickup selector switch so it's completely over to the right hand side, this position selects just the neck pickup. When you consider that each of these pickups and each of these combinations of pickups produces a different sound, that's quite a variety of sounds you can produce even before you start playing with the volumes and the tones and the sounds on your amplifier. Whilst we're talking about the volume and the tone knobs, I'll point out how these work. And the volume control controls the volume for the entire guitar. However, there's two tone controls. The one on the right, as you're looking at it, controls the neck pickup or the pickup on the right. And the tone control on the left, as you're looking at it, controls the centre pickup. The bridge pickup doesn't have its own tone control. And this is quite normal. This is a standard Stratocaster design. I'll tune the guitar up now before I do any tests. And I'll demonstrate how each pickup sounds on a very clean sound. As usual with a brand new guitar, I'll probably need to go through the tuning at least twice, possibly three times, because the strings are settling in. I have mentioned this before in other videos, but you wouldn't actually tune a guitar like this normally. I'm tuning it like this so I can keep the end of the guitar still and the tuner in frame you'd normally tune it in the playing position. However, for obvious reasons, it's far easier for me to do it this way, and then you can see exactly what I'm doing. Considering it's straight out of the box, it's not that badly out of tune. It's not unusual to get them completely out of tune if they're straight out of the box. As I'm tuning the guitar, I found a couple of soft spots on the machine heads. 
and they don't affect the way you tune the guitar, but you can definitely tell they're on the cheaper end of the scale. I'm not speeding this bit up, because if I do, the sound goes funny, so you can't tell what's going on. Once I've tuned the guitar up, I'll do some very simple tests, and I'll just try out each pickup position, so you can hear the difference. And I'll use uh, as near as I can completely clean sound, so you're hearing the guitar and not my effects. Here we go, a simple test or demonstration of each pickup. What I got out of that test is that the humbucker pickup, which is by the bridge, is far louder than the middle and the neck pickup. However, I expected that to some degree because it is a humbucker and they do tend to produce more power. And obviously, if you do need to reduce the power being put out by the guitar, you simply turn the volume down. Right, let's take a look at the provided amplifier and see what that sounds like. I've actually done a far more detailed review of that amplifier in with the DST-152. So if you want to see a more detailed review of the amp, I've put the link down below in the description to that video so you can watch it. But I'll just show you the important points here and then we'll do some tests with this guitar. The amp is rechargeable using a USB lead, which is provided. However, they don't provide you a charger, but it will charge from any USB charger or even your computer. And the amp is only small, which has advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, it's not very powerful, as in it's only three watts. However, it's very portable and it allows you to practice the guitar more or less anywhere. I'll use the provided lead to test the amplifier and that's going to be in the bag of accessories. So let's unpack that now. And this package is quite comprehensive. You've got everything you need in there to get started. So. If you haven't got a guitar and this is your first guitar, you literally just need to get this and you've got everything you want. So looking from left to right, you've got the lead, a strap, some plectrums and a capo, a tuner, a spare set of strings and of course the tremolo bar, which I forgot about and all of this fits neatly into the bag. I'll just fit the tremolo bar onto the guitar whilst I remember. And it mounts into the hole in the bridge. However, be very careful, you don't want to strip the thread or cross thread it. So, whatever you do, don't force it. Right, I'll plug the provided lead into the guitar and into the amplifier and then we can see what sort of sounds we can get out of it. I'll make this a very short test 
because I haven't got enough lights and cameras to film both the guitar and the amp. So I'll focus in on the amp and then you can see what effects the controls have on the guitar sound. There's a switch on the back of the amplifier for the clean sound and the distorted sound and I click over here. Again, for a more complete review of the amp and all the accessories, click on the link in the description to the review of the DST-152 because I go through the accessories in far more detail in that video. However, I can say that this amp actually sounds better than it looks and it's surprisingly clear and reasonably loud. However, remember, it is only 3 watt. So, honestly, it's only a personal amp and for practicing. It wouldn't be able to keep up if you put it into a band environment. As I've already said, the accessories you get with this guitar are identical to those you get with the DST-152, which is the more expensive guitar. However, the only thing that is different is the guitar case. So let's take a look at that. Usually, when you provided a case with a budget guitar, it's pretty poor and it just provides enough protection to keep the rain off the guitar, but not to protect it against any bangs or knocks. However, the case provided with this guitar is better than average. The guitar fits in it really nicely and it's got a good level of padding, so it would protect the guitar from a reasonably hard knock. And it's got the usual carrying handle and shoulder straps, as well as a pocket in the front that will carry all the accessories. And I've put all the accessories still in their boxes and packaging, so they'd fit even better once they're unpackaged. To summarise this then, the case does its job and it's a safe place for keeping your guitar and your accessories and of course for transporting them. Right, let's bring the whole review together then and summarise it. Conclusion This guitar, as usual with Donna, is very good value and it's aimed at the learner and beginner market. And because of this, you get the whole set of accessories, which means if you were to buy this guitar set with the accessories, you wouldn't need anything else for a while. The guitar itself is pretty much perfect and it plays nicely and it arrived very well set up as well. There's one slight question mark in that the jack plug seems to come out at a very sharp angle. Generally, on guitars of this type, 
the jack plug sits close to the body. However, on this one, it comes out quite far. Which isn't a fault, it's just unusual. The quality of the accessories is very good, with everything being really usable. And the fact that they include an amp makes the whole package complete, because you've got everything you need to get started. And even though it's a cheap guitar, it's a good guitar, and I can see it lasting an awful long time, and possibly even outlasting people's interest, in which case you can sell it on. I'll sign out now, and then at the end of this video, I'll just have a couple of minutes of me improvising on this guitar, but going through my amp, so you can see the full capability of the guitar. Thank you very much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, or guitar lessons, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And then you'll be notified when I upload new lessons. And if you want to improve on the guitar, take a look at my YouTube channel where I've got several short courses in the form of playlists. And you can also find all the lessons at www.ebooksforguitar.com and there you'll find the tablature in PDF format as well. And if you want to support the channel, the most helpful thing you could do would be to share the channel or the webpage with as many people as you possibly can because the more views the videos get, the more videos I can make in the future. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll come back again soon.